Is our food becoming less nutritious? Many people claim that the nutrient content in our food has been decreasing over the decades. But is this really true? And should we be worried? A study published in 2004 looked at 43 different common garden crops and how their nutritional value had changed between 1950 and 1999. Now what they found was that on average, the protein content of those plants decreased by about 6%. Vitamin C decreased 15% and vitamin B2 by a whopping 38%. They also noticed declines in minerals like iron and calcium. Now there is some debate around the numbers because well, how well could we really have measured those nutrients back in 1950? But there is still this concern that the food we're eating today might be less nutritious than say the same vegetables 50 years ago. Several other recent studies also suggest a pattern is emerging. So if we're witnessing a nutrient collapse, what's causing it? One factor that many people point to is depletion of the soils. Given plants draw their nutrients up from the soil, intense farming practices were thought to be the cause of nutrient depletion. If you look at micronutrients, things like minerals, well, there are decreasing levels in plants. But farmers have always put a lot of effort into maintaining their soils and using fertilizers to ensure that the plants have all the nutrients they need, which makes that argument less convincing. We're still getting big plants, and they wouldn't grow that well if they didn't have the nutrients they need in the soil. So why else might nutrients be declining? One possibility is that it's selective breeding. If you look at crops like corn today, they're barely recognizable when you compare them to their ancestors, the wild corn from which these were bred. Basically, since the advent of agriculture, we have been breeding our food crops for higher yields, for resistance to pests and changes in the climate. And by and large, we've been successful. Crops are now bigger and grow faster than ever before. But are they more nutritious? Maybe we've accidentally been breeding the nutrition out of our foods in pursuit of other objectives. Now it's tough to really assess how big of a factor selective breeding is because we can't easily compare this produce to the same produce a hundred years ago or a thousand years ago. So we need something else to be able to determine whether it's selective breeding causing this decrease or something else. What would be really helpful would be a plant that has never been selectively bred. Where would you find one like that? Well, this is where weeds come in handy. In North America, there is a wildflower called goldenrod. It's an important source of protein for bees, but not humans, and so it has remained wild or untouched by selective breeding. But how would you know what goldenrod was like 100 or 200 years ago? The Smithsonian Institute have been keeping hundreds of samples of goldenrod dating all the way back to 1842. Using these samples, and samples they collected in 2014, scientists were able to compare modern goldenrod with goldenrod from over a hundred years ago. And the results were astounding. They found that there was a 30% decrease in the amount of protein in the goldenrod pollen over that period. So if it's not selective breeding, what else has contributed to goldenrod becoming less nutritious over the last 150 years or so? One rather surprising idea was that carbon dioxide could play a vital role. Here we see in cross-section, air, with its particles of carbon dioxide gas, enters the plant and makes its way into every living cell. CO2 is like plant food in the air. It basically increases the growth of all plants. Over the last couple of centuries, the level of CO2 in the atmosphere has increased a lot from about 280 parts per million to over 400 parts per million today. Now that might not sound like a lot, but if you're thinking of it as plant food, we're talking about an increase by almost 50%. And we can see the impact from space. It's called the greening of the planet. Scientists have been tracking the impact of CO2 on plants via experiments called FACE, which stands for Free Air Carbon Dioxide Enrichment. There are experiments run 
by injecting more CO2 into the area where plant crops are grown. And they find that wheat and barley, rice and potatoes, they will grow faster if there's more CO2 in the atmosphere. But here's the thing, they don't necessarily become more nutritious. They simply put on more carbs. In other studies conducted in Japan and China, scientists pumped carbon dioxide into rice crops to simulate the kind of CO2 concentrations expected in 50 years time. On average, protein levels fell by 10%, iron by 8%, and zinc by 5%. But a lower concentration of nutrients doesn't necessarily correlate with a decline in the plant's nutrient contents. It's called the dilution effect. So what does all this mean for us? Well, by 2050, scientists estimate that up to 150 million people in the developing world may be on the verge of protein deficiency due to the decreasing levels of protein in their staple foods. So does that mean we should all be taking vitamins and supplements? Well, no, at least not yet, because the nutrient declines are small enough that you should still be able to get everything you need from a well-balanced diet, including plenty of fruits and veggies. But the increasing levels of CO2 and the dilution effect may be exacerbating the obesity epidemic. The thinking goes like this. We feel full or satiated when we've consumed a certain amount of protein. So if the protein levels are going down, we may have to eat more food, more carbohydrates, and more fats to achieve the same level of protein. And that may make us fatter. While this is still a contentious theory, what is becoming increasingly clear is that the changing atmosphere, specifically the rising level of CO2, is changing the food we eat. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that. I uh, made this video as kind of a companion piece to my new feature length documentary called Vitamania, all about the sense and nonsense of vitamins and supplements. You can watch that documentary if you haven't already by clicking right here. It's available globally, except for France and Germany because it'll be on your TV on September 25th. I'm really sorry about that, uh, but uh, I really appreciate you making it possible for me to make both YouTube videos and big international TV documentaries. It's been a lot of fun and Really, I couldn't have done it without you.